My dad won his first race in our speedster ever. And he drove the car there to the track, raced it, and drove it home. That's what it was about back then. There was always horses around. I remember one night my dad woke me up and there was a 911R in the driveway. We went around uh, Sunset and Brent went in the car. I remember it being loud and violent. 67 you had the R program. 20 cars, four prototypes. Uh, they didn't really have a place to race, so they were not homologated. So they did a couple of races, they did a uh, couple of rallies. But apart from that, it really didn't race that much. The R program was almost the pilot program for the RS, where they thought, okay, we're gonna build 500 of these special cars and sell them. They said, well, if it's going the way of the, the R program, you couldn't sell 20, we're not gonna sell 500. And luckily, the RS program was actually quite successful because not only did, did they sell 500, they ended up making 1,600 cars. In the 911 Porsche, the RS models were arguably the halo cars. Uh, RS, as you know, stands for Rennsport. It really represents the racing histories of the 911s. And probably the uh, uh, most iconic of the early 911s was the 73. 911 2.7 RS and uh, today any serious 911 collection needs to have one of those. Stepping into the 74, in your mind you kind of conjure this, oh, it's kind of like a Carrera SC, but it's nothing like that at all. It's a really a raw car. The steering is, is instantaneous, very much like the early steering, super direct, super feedback. You feel every bump, uh, instant turn in if you keep the weight in the front. So it's, it's a wonderful steering. Um, engine's fantastic. You got the three liter, so you get more torque. Um, sounds great. It's a very involving, almost like an engulfing experience when you drive that car. But it, yeah, it's a fantastic car to drive. And out of the older RS's, it's, it's my favorite car by far, hands down. These horses, the DNA is the same. You get the same feeling in your ass, the same feeling through your fingertips. The RS is just a bit more, like Spinal Tap, just a bit more. Obviously, 18 years of technology and development is a long time to this wonderful Maritime Blue 964 RS. Big leap in terms of development. You know, it's, it's almost a very civilized car, but it, it feels, I don't want to say soft, but in terms, you know, compared to the, the frenetic early cars, it's very, very refined. It's, it's still a very capable car, but it, it, it almost feels more like a, a, a 964, you know, that it has just been massaged just a little bit, but not as much, there's not as much RS in this particular model year for me. Porsche, when they built the 993 RS, I think they realized they needed to, you know, uh, turn the dial up a little bit more and give us a little bit more driver involvement. I mean, obviously, some of it is, was at the time necessitated by the FIA rules that said if you wanted a big wing in the race, you must sell a car that has the same big wing on it. But apart from the visual aspects, the feedback on the 993 um, is, 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 is more, uh, more direct. So you have, you have more power. You have a six-speed gearbox for the first time versus a five-speed in the 964. The big change is at the rear. You have a five-link uh, rear suspension, um, which makes a, you know makes quite a difference on track, especially. The RS is a track-oriented car. You drive it to the track, and you get out there, and you can lean on it, and it won't let you down. I mean, they're fantastic cars, and. They're the pinnacle of the, of the line and the story. Uh, 
I'm sat next to the 996, Porsche's first uh, water-cooled 911, and in essence, the birth of the GT3. The GT3 really, I think, was born with the 996, and this is the pinnacle of the GT3, the GT3 RS. It was never destined for our shores, for North America. So it's a really rare, rare automobile. And uh, they came out with the RS America, right? Which is just a stripped down Carrera too. But this is the real deal here. And uh, you can hop in the 73 all the way up to this and this. You know you're in a, you could close your eyes, you know you're in a Porsche, you know? At least I can. The good thing about the Ingrams, if they feel you're competent enough, they let you drive them and use them the way they were supposed to be used. And that, you know, means driving them hard at the IR, as you saw. To me, uh, my favorite is uh, the car behind us, the 3.8, uh, last gen of the 997. Uh, like the gearbox, I just like everything about the car. And the color too. <laughs> the 3.8, again, it's a big step up from the 996 because you kind of have a redesign of the 911. Um, much more modern car, much more sensitive car, I think. You know, it's, it's really a driving tool and at this point, the GT3, the GT3 RS, now we're talking really, really focused track cars. It's, it's really a, a, a track day tool, so to speak, that, is, that happens to be street legal and Porsche sells it to you. One of the many great things about the Ingrams is they just allow you to drive these cars. They like to share their collection and allow people to drive them and experience really what Porsche is all about. It's about the drive. So for me, it was a, a real great experience to sort of hop in and out of one and see how the car has evolved through each generation. It is very satisfying to now have one of each of those editions. We're privileged to be caretakers of these cars because they do represent a part of history for the company. The worst thing you can do with these things is let them sit, you know, and the Ingrams exercise them. They're like family and the best people in the world, and uh, they ask me time and time and time again to come back and drive their stuff, which is a privilege for me. Yeah, we just, we get on, you know. They're like family. They're crucial to this hobby of ours in terms of their involvement, you know, because nowadays they really become custodians of this great collection. Um, as such, they have a responsibility towards the cars, but also, you know, towards what they do for the, the hobby in general. Having, you know, ex extraordinary vision to assemble probably one of the best streetcar collections. I mean, everything in this hall, you can put a tag on it, take it on the road. So that's a very unique, a very focused um, approach to, a, to building a collection.